Congratulations, you have arrived at the last section of this course. Thank you for your participation. While our joint exploration is coming to an end, this is just the beginning of your lifelong journey in the world of systems. I hope that the topics we have covered and the tools that you could try have provided you with enough inspiration and motivation to continue. So let's bring it all together. What does it mean to follow a systems approach? During this course, we have learned that system thinking is a mindset, a way of seeing the world. We have also become familiar with various tools that we can use and have gone through a process of system exploration together. Can you identify the main steps of this process? Post a video and try to make a sketch for yourself about it. We have seen how choosing a challenge and uh, identifying a main question for our explorations can help us determine the boundaries of our system. Choosing what elements belong to the system and what elements are part of its environment can help us define the scope of our work. Tapping into our vision, especially if it's a vision of the healthy system that we have co-created with others, can give us ample inspiration and motivation. Then the next step was to identify the nodes, to see what are the main elements of the system and then discover the interconnections among them. After exploring these links, the next step is to identify the direction and type of causal relationships that are present among them. In the previous videos, we got to know two basic types of causal relationships reinforcing loops and balancing loops. Now the final step is to bring these loops together and create a complex systems map. Systems mapping is an iterative process, which can help us to understand the underlying structure of the system and also to explore the driving forces that dictate its behavior. During this process, we bring every element together connecting all the feedback loops and creating a big visual diagram. While reinforcing loops can drive a system towards explosion, growth, decline, erosion or collapse, balancing loops can stabilize its operations or even can cause it to stagnate, making any kind of change and transformation very difficult. The mapping process can be valuable in various ways. We can use it to communicate insights and understandings, develop interventions or innovations, or prepare policy decisions. It is important to note that this is usually a process that takes time and it is very essential to involve different actors of the system in the co-creation process. After the map is created, it is important to validate it and improve it further by sharing it with various stakeholders of the system. This is especially crucial if the map was developed by a small team. In the framework of this course, our explorations finish here. It is time now to derive some insights. Here we are at a point where we need to shift from the exploration mode or divergent thinking to a more convergent type of thinking which will allow us to prioritize the main insights and the learning points from our journey. During my workshops with primary school kids, I often play a game. We stand in a circle and we start to throw a ball of yarn around. Each person holds onto the yarn before throwing it to the next. This way we start to create a complex web. Then someone starts to pull on the yarn and I ask the children who feels this pull. So far, in every group that I played this with, someone came up with the idea that this is somewhat similar to how we are all interconnected with each other. Before learning that they get rewarded for knowing the right answer, children have a natural tendency for exploration, asking questions, and understanding how everything is interconnected. 
until our social environments make us forget our natural tendency for this approach. It is much easier to choose a mental model of interconnectedness instead of mental model of separation. There are various ways to deal with the complexity of systems. If we want to use the systems approach not only for gaining a deeper understanding, but to catalyze learning and transformation on an individual and collective level, we need to go beyond the thinking or mindset level. Katja Castro Laszlo, the relative of the famous system thinker Erwin Laszlo, calls this transformation and learning embodying the systems approach. In her words, systems being and systems living brings it all together, linking head, heart and hands. In this course, we have mostly exercised our mind, raising our awareness of complex systems and briefly journeying into the world of the heart. It is my wish and hope that you will continue your journey, bringing all what you have learned into your everyday life and practicing systems being in your actions as well.